The previous lab was the FIFO or the first in, first out instructions, load and unload. In this next section, we're going to use the LIFO load and LIFO unload instructions. And we'll give you the same example. The labs weren't set up to deal with conveyors, but just to give you a mental image of how you might use this instruction. In the previous lab, in the introduction, we talked about using a first in, first out to feed a spur conveyor that uh, traverse cartons from one trunk conveyor to another trunk conveyor. In other words, let's say that we wanted to create a unit load which means a pallet load of a specific product and we have multiple products traveling down a trunk conveyor. Well, when the barcode reader or whatever the device is for tracking the packages, the cartons, senses a particular product, it diverts it off onto a spur. In order to divert it off on the spur, the spur conveyor starts, the diverter moves the carton. As soon as the carton has transferred and cleared the trunk, the spur stops. Every time another product comes along of the same type, we start the spur conveyor and transfer another one in behind the first one, a third one in behind the second, and so on. So the first carton in on that spur conveyor will be the first one to reach the other end and go off onto another trunk conveyor that goes to unit loaders or palletizers. So once we've accumulated enough cartons on the spur to make a unit load, then when there's sufficient space on that uh, unit load trunk conveyor, we will then empty these cartons off onto that trunk, which will take it to a palletizer or a unitizer and carton or er, palletizer. So the last one in is not the first out. So we're talking about FIFOs, the previous lab, first in, first out. So as you feed these onto the spur conveyor, when you empty them the other end, the first one in is the first one out. Now we're going to do LIFO, last in, first out. So this would be a dead end spur. In other words, we let's say we want to collect up uh, cartons of products to go on a specific semi. Let's say this is a big uh, distribution center where we have semis that come in. One semi is full of Sony TVs, another semi is full of uh, JVC stereo systems. We have all these semis that come in full of one product and then the product is unloaded and put on a main trunk conveyor that circulates through the plant. So let's say we want to fill an order for a particular store in uh, Podunk, Mississippi. The order then looks to see what products it needs and if one of these products passes by a trunk, a dead-end trunk, I'm sorry, a dead-end spur conveyor, that we are going to build up the load that goes to the truck that's going to deliver to that store. As we see products on the list, we divert them off onto that spur conveyor. Once the correct products have passed by, not passed by, but approached the spur and we've diverted them off so we have what we need to fulfill that order, then we take and unload all of those products back out onto the trunk conveyor, but they will go out as an order, not as individual cartons. And then that order, once it's back out on the trunk line, will go down to the shipping area and will divert off onto another spur that goes to the loading dock where they're going to load up the truck that's going to go to that specific store. Now, that dead-end spur that we're going to collect the products on to create the order, the last one in will be the first one out when you turn around to empty it. So I'm just trying to give you a mental image of how you might use a last in first out instruction. And you can also do this same uh, process the hard way using individual instructions instead of using the LIFO instructions. Click on the orange box when you're ready to continue. Okay, in this lab, I had you replace the FIFO load and FIFO unload with a LIFO load and LIFO unload. The logic is really presented the same except 
that we are going to instruct instruct the memory locations with LIFO load and unload instead of FIFO load and unload so we can see the difference. So once you changed your logic, downloaded, you saved, downloaded, and went online, the first thing that we had you do was to execute the elapsed time capture logic to fill up the stack. In the previous lab, we had you do a couple at a time. You've already observed that behavior, so we had you just execute it until the stack was full. Did the data objects stack up any different with the LIFO load than they did with the FIFO load instruction? No, they, f they filled up in the same order. The first one loaded was N71, the second one was N72, N73, etc. So both the LIFO load and FIFO load fill up the stack in the exact same manner. While observing the value in register N710 and the destination N720, toggle switch to. What changed with the LIFO load instruction when you did this? The done bit went off because it's no longer done. As soon as you unload, you have space to load more so it's not done. What happened to the value in N710? It was copied to the destination N720. What happened to the values in N71 through N79? Nothing. This is the major difference between the FIFO and the LIFO stack behaviors. With the FIFO, when you unload, it shifts the values towards the unload position. With the LIFO, it does not. Now, you could add logic to backfill the unloaded positions with zeros if it really bothered you to see the values there. But the values become of no effect and aren't counted as being members of the stack once the pointer has moved past them. While observing the value in register N710 and N720, execute the ET capture. Where did the new captured ETs get recorded? The last unloaded memory position or memory location, N710. So up until we do an unload, the, the FIFO and LIFO behave the same. So a LIFO load and a FIFO load appear to behave identically. It's the unloads that really show the difference. Okay, now that you've completed that part of the lab, let's do some comparisons between the FIFO instructions and the LIFO instructions. We did this as a true and false. The first one, the FIFO load and LIFO load initially fill the stack in the same order. You notice I said initially. Yes. They fill it up starting with the uh, first element or the first word of the memory file and then second word, third word, fourth word. So they fill the stack identically the same initially. Now the LIFO unload copies the value from the bottom of the stack to the destination when you execute an unload. This is true. The FIFO unload moves the value from the top of the stack to the destination when you execute a FIFO unload. This is true. So right here, uh, the second and third true and false question here really define a major difference between the LIFO and FIFO unload instructions. The LIFO unloads a value from the bottom of the stack. The FIFO unloads it from the top of the stack. So when we say first in, first out, last in first out. We load them in the same way but we unload them in the opposite. Okay, the FIFO first in first out unload shifts the values towards the top of the stack when it unloads one. That's true. The LIFO unload does not alter the values in the stack when it copies a register to the destination. That's true. Remember, the FIFO unload 
it shifts them towards the unload point. The LIFO doesn't shift the values. Just the pointer points to the next one to be unloaded. The FIFO load puts new values at the bottom of the stack. That's true. The LIFO overwrites the last unloaded position with the new values. That's true. If when you're finished with these labs on FIFOs and LIFOs, if you don't fully understand their behavior, go back and do the lab again and watch very carefully and don't proceed to the next lab section until you fully understand these instructions. Now, six months from now, you may not remember the behavior of these instructions, but having once known that you understood is an easier route back into refreshing your memory.